Good morning and welcome to this service for St. George's Church Taormina for the third Sunday of Epiphany. This Sunday is also the Sunday that falls in the week of prayer for Christian unity that begins on the 18th uh, Confession of St. Peter and continues through the 25th of January, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. So you'll notice that some of the portions of the service will make reference to our prayer for Christian unity. Our opening hymn is the hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. And we'll sing the first, second, and fifth verses. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We have come together as God's family to pray for the recovery of the unity of Christ's church and for the renewal of our common life. The Lord is full of gentleness and compassion, in penitence and faith, let us ask his forgiveness for our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, 
in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll sing together, Glory be to God in heaven. Glory be to God in heaven, he so knows who loved you well. On the earth let all your people speak your grace, your wonders tell. Lord, we praise you for your glory, mighty Father, heaven's King. Hear our joyful adoration and accept the thanks we bring. Only Son of God the Father, glad who takes our sin away. Now with God in triumph seated, for your mercy, Lord, we pray. Jesus Christ, most high and holy, Savior, you are God alone. In the glory of the Father, with the Spirit, three in one. Let us pray. God of all mercy, your Son proclaimed good news to the poor release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit, and set all your people free to praise you. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the first reading from Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
We'll read together Psalm 19, found in the lectionary insert. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are yes, they than gold, gold, more than a much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey, honey in the comb. By them also, also is your servant, servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is his great, great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, all keep your, your servant, servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then there shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The second reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and, the ind and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? 
Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. In today's Gospel, we have Jesus returning from the wilderness and beginning her, his ministry and then going home. Going home to his own people going to his home synagogue to worship with them as was his custom. Jesus comes and he goes to the synagogue and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah is handed to him and he begins to read. He reads the words, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In speaking these words, having begun his ministry and having begun to manifest those things that were to take place in his presence, he sets an agenda for his ministry. He is, as we acknowledge, the anointed one, the Messiah. And he's anointed to bring about these good things, to spread the good news and empower others also to enter into that, into that kingdom, into that ministry. After he finishes reading, he rolls up the scroll, gives it back to the attendant, and sits down. At that point, the gospel says the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. 
he had read these words and they had heard them no doubt many times and in fact they probably had put them to heart but they sat quietly with their eyes fixed on him then he began to say to them today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing today all that God has promised has been fulfilled and of course in that he claims to be the one who was sent to fulfill God's promises the Messiah today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and for that brief moment they were still fixed on him now we know as we read on in the gospel that they quickly began to complain they began to complain well we know him we know his parents we know his family uh, and ultimately who is he to tell us these things and the scripture goes on to say and they even had trouble accepting his ministry because he was a prophet being a stranger in his own country but on that day on that day he articulated his agenda his agenda for ministry his agenda to share the good news now we know as time went on many began to flock to him and while those of his home country were told later in the gospel weren't able to receive him and he was not able to do much he began to do many and powerful things setting forth the agenda for spreading the good news and the good news still spreads among us and we have ourselves this agenda the agenda to share with others the good news of Christ Jesus a spirit of power of healing of restoration and as we recall on this Sunday and reflecting especially on the words of st. Paul his call to us to be in unity his call to us to be united as the body of Christ to perform this ministry and to carry out this agenda he has set before us the words of Paul are profound they remind us that in fact there is one body with many members and the members though many are one body they are one body we become a part of the body of Christ how we become a part of the body of Christ by being baptized in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit once that happens we're part of the body of Christ and we're called to exercise ministry as the baptized and we're called to live together with one another in unity and whatever divisions we have managed to manufacture and they are many whatever divisions we have managed to put in our way we're always called to look beyond them and most of those divisions have much more to do with human pride and control and manipulation than they have to do with the good news of the gospel well we do things this way or we do things that way but but what's the purpose and who's the head of all this and what did he tell us to do so we're reminded again and again that Jesus told us to be one as he prayed to God that we would be one for many reasons but perhaps chief among those reasons that it will enhance our witness in the gospel acclamation today we talk about that proclamation that we are called to be one so that the world will know the world will know that God sent Jesus 
And even beyond that, the world will know that God loves them. So our unity is critical. And our unity is one of love and respect. We have talked for many years about unity and it seems like sometimes we make some progress and then we go backward. And sometimes we get to the point in our discussions where we think there's not a hope for pro progress and some even in the midst of this say, I have no need of you, I'll go on because, you know, of course, one of the big problems of this is we all think we're right and everyone else is wrong. But Paul makes it very clear. We don't do that. We can't do that. We can't say to another member of the body, I have no need of you. Because the body is strengthened and enriched by all of us. And the ministry that we're called to do is made stronger and more effective when we're all engaged in it. When we all take those words to heart. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ. And every little element of what we bring to it, just like every element of what we have as individuals blends together to make everything stronger. And it's the same in our own bodies, in our own churches. We're reminded by Paul that there are a variety of gifts, that people do different things and are equipped to do different things. And some things might appear to be more significant and some might appear to be less significant, but God honors the less significant, at least in our eyes, lifting it up to do something significant. So as we continue in this week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray that we would actually take that to heart. That we would have a mind in us that's seeking to work together to set aside differences and to glory in what can happen when the power of God is manifested in the combined work of the entire body of all his people. We repent and we weep about our divisions as we look forward in anticipation for what is to come. This great reading from Nehemiah uh, is something that we need to take to heart as well because God's people have been in exile. They came back from exile and one thing they did was to sit and listen to the word of God. And as they listened to the word read out loud, they began to weep. And they began to weep because they had fallen so short of what God had asked of them. And they took that at that moment to heart as they understood what was being said. And Ezra the priest taught them and said, This day is holy to the Lord. Do not mourn or weep. Do not mourn or weep, but rejoice. So we go through a process of mourning and weeping over the fact that we have cultivated and supported division, but then we look forward in rejoicing to what can happen once those divisions are set aside. May we continue to focus on Jesus. Like at that moment, you know, at that moment in the synagogue when all eyes were fixed on him because of what he had said and what he had articulated, let us keep our eyes fixed on him because what he has told us is the path to eternal life. What he has told us is the way forward. And let us rejoice in receiving that. And let us go forward to live out as best we can in our human capacity, supported by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
to spread the good news of this kingdom and to live that agenda. For this call, we give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not of man, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Robert and David, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our queen, Sergio, the president of Italy, Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loved us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We remember Karen. We also remember those who have been commended to our prayers. Remembering Yuna, Lori, Salvo, Geta, Rosario, Salvina, David and family, Joanna, Brenda, Jacqueline, Sylvia, Antonio, Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. George and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace to you here and peace to those who are joining us online. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because of the unity you have given us in your Son and that you are the God and Father of us all, above all, and through all, and in all. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forevermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, 
and according to your holy will. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, and we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. George and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. To share in the body of Christ, we break this bread. To share in the body of Christ, though we are many, we are one body because. Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you, eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep and preserve you unto everlasting love. Amen. Thank you. 
body of Christ to the bread of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep and preserve you unto everlasting life. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep and preserve you unto everlasting life. Our friend Belou is going to have to leave us at this time to take her husband to work, but uh, we rejoice with her on this day because it's the 28th anniversary of her marriage to her husband, John. So we pray for God to continue to bless both of them, and we thank her for her kind presence with us and joining us in worship and helping us on this day. Blessings. Thank you. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Do we have any notices? We have, oh, I just jotted some things down on a lot of the paper. Oh, here it is. Oh. We have our Zoom meeting this Thursday at 4.30 Italian time, Sicilian time. And I'll send the link um, or the sign-in information and um, and I'll send, I'll make up an agenda if, if anybody has any comments or they'd like to add to the agenda, just send it to me on WhatsApp. And um, February, if I know Susan's trying to get um, London to find a priest for them. If they don't, we can do it February. Yeah, please let us know. I think Father Giovanni is supposed to be at St. George's next Sunday, but if there's anything we can do to try to fill in any gaps in February, do let us know. It's been very cold here. Uh, it's been as low as uh, 15 below zero Celsius, uh, which always sounds much worse. Uh, it hasn't been below zero Fahrenheit yet, but uh, it's been a very cold week, and they originally told us we wouldn't have above freezing for the rest of the month, but I think today it might be it might be 35, and uh, uh, Monday or Tuesday it might be 45 Fahrenheit. So uh, whatever you're having there, and I've read about some cold temperatures, it's, it's not anything compared to this. 
<laughs> and, and our points in his are going to last forever. And we might have snow tonight, so we'll we'll wait and see. Oh, yeah, they're supposed to have it tonight and tomorrow. It's really cold here, extremely cold. Sean's already got his um, airplane ticket purchased, and I'm working on mine since I won't be going with him. He's going to England, um, and I'm coming straight to Italy. So, so I'm, I'm working on finding a good deal for me to get over to you guys. We're preparing with great anticipation. It won't be all that long. Mm -mm. Well, our concluding hymn is... Uh, Oh, Zion, haste, and uh, I think we'll sing all of it. <clears throat> oh, Zion, haste, thy mission I fulfilling to tell to Son 
and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. This concludes our service.